Hey, good morning everyone and welcome back. Now you've seen me use this big lathe here. This is my largest lathe. Uh, I probably don't need a bigger lathe than this, but I tell you what, this is quite a workhorse. And it does small things pretty well. But <laughs> there's a point to where small things become pretty cumbersome. And as nimble as this lathe is, I can make uh, number 12 screws uh, quite decently on it. But when it starts getting smaller than that, then the Monarch 10 EE takes over. Well, there's a point with the Monarch 10 EE where uh, it needs a little bit of help going smaller. So I have a smaller lathe for that. And I'd like to show that to you. Okay, so we'll we'll go around the corner here and have a look. Okay, um, I hope you're all doing good. Had a good Thanksgiving. We've got Christmas coming up. Okay, now here's <laughs> <laughs> that old Axelson. Let's go around the corner here. It's the Monarch 10 EE. Now, what I got over here on a, on, a, on my Walker Turner drill press, I found I can mount this uh, 11 8 millimeter lathe. And it's really quite handy for me. You see, I got the foot pedal down there. And I can sit here in the stool and uh, operate this uh, fantastic machine. Kind of have a look at it here. Oh, by the way, uh, I did make uh, a new screw for my shared Tomeco caliper. You know, they don't make these anymore. You have to make your own screws. <laughs> Okay, so that that's fixed, and uh, let's let's look at the machine. You know, this is like uh, hard inch is more pattern after this with uh, this type of bed, and uh, the uh, there's no rack or anything like that. You loosen this. And then you can slide the whole cross slide, and it it moves out and in. So we'll lock that down. And uh, one of the things about these, but I don't want those falling down. Just fix them. Um, oh, this one is a ball bearing headstock. It has, it has uh, angular contact ball bearings. And uh, the uh, it, this takes WW Webster Whitcomb, I think is what those were. Eight millimeter, and uh, eight millimeter is the most common. There's six millimeter and and smaller, but those are kind of going mostly for older uh, watchmaking lathes. But eight millimeter and then ten millimeter, a little bit larger, more instrument making lathes. Um, those call it. Uh, Six millimeter and ten millimeter are really hard to find, but uh, eight millimeter collets are easier. Let's have a look at a box of collets. Now, this is a real problem, uh, even on these lights, because uh, you get into a box of collets like this, and uh, let's see, you can get them kind of close. These. Uh, these are uh, for grabbing wheels and things like that, see? And there's a full set of those. And there's some mixed brands here. And I'll have to tell you the story how I acquired this set here. So anyway, uh, often on eBay, they want $29 a piece for one of these collets. These here, it costs you a lot more. And this is a full set of collets. If you go down to number one to something, I don't know what those are. Up into the 50s, 58 or something, 60. And uh, like a number one is, uh, I think it's like around three and a half thousandths. Uh, <laughs> it's like the thickness of a hair. So... I start using this machine definitely uh, one eighth inch and uh, smaller. Then you know I start looking to this, and it, the, this machine does a lot of things. 
and I'll have to probably show it on several videos some different things you can do with this. So there's the box of collets. Now here is <laughs> a half inch micrometer and that's pretty handy on that machine. And uh, back here I got a hard translucent Arkansas stone. That's important for the tools for that layout. You really got to get those tools very, very sharp. Here, let's see if I can open this. Which way does it go this way? Hold on. My fingers. Now this is a very important micrometer for the work with this small stuff. It's a point sharp point micrometer it's a brown and sharp and when you start getting in the tiny things you really kind of need something like that okay you can modify stuff too you don't want to be afraid to do that okay what else we got here okay now now this here is pretty cool it's called a uh, staking tool or a full set and what it is it's just all kinds of things it's like that your shop press for the ultra miniature and here it is here see see that it's got a micrometer on the top of it to uh, adjust uh, the uh, distance that you're uh, pushing and it, it also takes a bunch of accessories. Whoa! Let me pick that up. <clears throat> there wasn't a collet in it. But it takes this collet thing here. And you can put collets in it and uh, rotate it and uh, use these uh, watch reamers. Okay. So I picked this up in the 1980s. I got all this stuff and another box of junk that I can't find right now. It's got some odds and ends in it. Uh, I think 350 bucks. Let me see what I... I'll show you how I found it. Yeah, see, before the... Uh, before the uh, internet, there was the machinery journal. And somebody advertised in one of these uh, discontinued in the 2000s, but uh, it's 1998. But it's back in the 80s, somebody advertised that they had these uh, jeweler's lathes in New York City package deals. So I called because uh, uh, I got to make pens and small things. And uh, I really needed this for, um, at the time I had a South Bend Heavy 10, and I needed to go smaller for pins and other things that hold things together. Like, a lot of things are pinned together. And, you know, you can uh, have a, a wobbled out pin, and you pull it out, but you need a bigger pin. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this tool is, let's see, you got any size pin. You can drill a hole with anything, but to find a pin that fits perfectly is another story. So uh, this is what I do to solve that problem. I, if you got a hole, a tiny hole, I can make a pin to fit into it. I can make it stepped. I can make it tapered. <laughs> I can make pins and and other little things, you know, little bushings and tiny things. And plus, I fix my uh, dial indicators and my dial bore gauges. Now that was another aspect to getting this. And I, I can talk about the dial bore gauges later and fixing them and why I chose the brand of the porch gates that I use. So this is actually an extremely important uh, set for me. And uh, it's just got cool things in it. Like this thing here, I mean, that thing's full of rubies. I guess it's like uh, a jewel gauge. Okay. Then, uh, these things, I'm not going to open them, are full of jewels. 
and uh, some kind of a abrasive stone here. You know, I don't know how to use all this stuff, but uh, I, oh, oh, what's that there? It's something with a spring on. Oh, maybe it came out of this. No, I'll put that back in one of those holes. But this is like a plat in here for the staking tool. You see that? Or your shop press. <laughs> very, very nice set here. You know, it's just uh, very, very nice. Made in uh, this set here. Made in Switzerland. Seats. But, uh, so anyway, the whole set back in about, oh gosh, mid-1980s, uh, was 350 bucks. The collets, the staking set, a box of other junk, some screw plates, little things uh, like that, and uh, this machine. And... Uh, I don't think you're going to find that kind of deal now. Back then, back in the 80s, see, this stuff was still surplus from the watch industry. And now, you know, that stuff's kind of getting scattered around. Now, this company that put this together, this is like a, a, a Bowley cross light. It's a German cross light. It works just fine, but it's not Levin. Not made by Levin. And what else I get? Okay, I've got the traditional rest here for gravers. And that makes the machine like, um, like a wood lathe. You see, you got your little rest here. You got a little, you can adjust the height and you use gravers like, like, uh, wood turning tools. And when you start getting really small, the graver works better than the cross light. And it's real tricky cutting tiny pieces, uh, with this machine. Okay. Now, one of the things that, that goes with the machine is an alcohol lamp. And you go, well, what would, what would that be for? Well, we can go back over here. And uh, we have uh, chunks here. This screws into a holder. But this is a shellac chuck. And I got them at different sizes. And what you can do is uh, you heat this up a little bit, you can put a drop of shellac on there, then you can uh, uh, like put a piece of shim stock on there that's like six thousandths thick and machine it down to three thousandths or three and a quarter thousandths and uh, do magic things that people wonder how in the heck you did that. You know, if somebody comes to you and they want a shim that they can't get, you can machine it by using... Uh, uh, a shellac chuck. There's one there. Now, here's a part I made on the Monarch 10 E here. This is a WW 8 millimeter shank, 2 millimeter Unimat ch chuck thread. So uh, I can use uh, Unimat accessories. Or, or whatever, you know, and yeah, these things are, uh, you know, fairly easy to make. That's a nice piece, isn't it? I don't think you can buy that. But you can sure make it on that machine over there. Make a lot of things you can't buy. <laughs> yeah. And this too, you know, this like completes uh, something. I don't know what that little spacer there is that might have been something i machined or duplicated by putting it onto a uh, shellac chuck oh and there's junk in here it's a little puller i don't know exactly that's more clock size i think and i got a box full of other little odds and ends that i can't find right now uh what's this one Oh, this is like a very, very small shellac chuck. So you can put a little tiny gear on there and make it thinner or do some machine work on it. They did all kinds of things. I got some screws down in there for, uh, I've got, uh, what else have I got here? Oh, 
this thing is just like great for drilling. And uh, one of the things I do is uh, carburetor jets. Now I can take antique carburetor jets. I can actually manufacture them on the hard ends. Chucker is what I used to do. I used to make them too for obsolete carburetors. But you can take and uh, silver solder this up and then re-drill it to a size you need if you need to change a jet. Okay. And there's air bleed jets and there's uh, fuel jets. Uh, here's some here, carburetor jets from the S&S company. And these are blank. Main jets, black, blank. All S&S except ES. Huh, it'll fit, uh, I got a Super B over there, it'll fit these with him. But anyway, you can drill these, and the best way to drill uh, carburetor jets is this little leaven right here. <laughs> it's really sweet. Now, the tailstock also takes the 8mm collet, and it rotates, see? So, if you want to do a really precision a hole that's small, you use one of these uh, watch ramers, see? Kind of a spoon-shaped little thing there, and you can make these on the cutter grinder here. I made them in larger sizes. So these will like fit in here and you can ream uh, stuff or you can uh, put them in the tailstock, drill, drill a little smaller hole and then uh, use a reamer here. And it's real nice. Leaves a, just a beautiful hole. You can see some very tiny collets here. Some more collets here. Yeah. All very nice. All very small. Now, <laughs> one of the problems I have is uh, my eyesight getting older. So I'm setting up here for a little better magnification and light and, and stuff like that. And also, I have to grind these tools. And these tools are very, very small. Here's one here. It's like um, eighth inch. Uh, um, high-speed steel here and that's just like a standard uh, cutter you know and it's not a very good one I have to redo that what else have I got here cut off see that one now I got this uh, I got the rocker tool post in there and I got a round nose tool and I want to do a demonstration. This is uh, 98 thousandths uh, uh, diameter drill rod. And I'll just go ahead and machine it down a little bit. I thought it'd be kind of fun to watch this thing work. So we can do that. And I'll get set up and uh, be back here, okay? Now, one of the things about these little miniature lathes is... Um, the tool bits are very tiny and kind of difficult to grind. So I'm adding some magnification over here at the cutter grinder and a better rest because I hand do it. Probably, mostly, totally. So I'm fabricating uh, a rest that uh, I can use back here. I can access it and it'll come up and have a little little rest here that's really pretty narrow so I can manipulate those uh, little grinding tools, put uh, uh, really smooth grinding, easy grinding wheels like this one on here. And it's just a real nice setup for grinding, uh, hand grinding um, tools. So I can go, you know, different different ways with them and uh, get it done. So <clears throat> I'm making these parts here out of uh, chunks of aluminum. This will slide around here. I got to be able to adjust the rest, you know, and I'll have a riser coming up to a piece. And uh, am I getting that in there? Getting it in there and uh, have this done 
And uh, I'll, I'll show a video of that. I'm using the other machines of uh, kind of putting that together. And it just kind of goes to show that the uh, tool and cutter grinder is just a very handy uh, machine to have in general. Okay. Well, I'm really hoping I can get this to stay in focus for you so you can see. Well, I don't know. I'm trying the best I can. Maybe somewhere there. It's not a very good macro camera. Okay, got it locked up there. Let's step on the gas here. And uh, I'll put a little bit of my wax lead on this uh, 98,000 uh, thick piece of uh, oil hardening drill rod. Now, materials are not real hard to find. I'm going to take the tailstock off so I can uh, work that crank handle a little better. Oh, much better then. Okay, I got a little round nose tool in there. And let's go back and forth with a little bit and cut that. Start working that down a little bit, huh? Now it'll get to a point where it'll probably break off. I like round nose tools. <laughs> Sometimes cutting back from the front is very helpful. Now you see this could be a, a tiny pin for a mechanism. Let's cut into a little bit more here. And we'll see what we got here for measurement. Get that giant stir up micrometer in there, huh? See, it's quite a bit easier getting a half inch micrometer in there than, uh, than a one inch. And what's it reading? Am I going from the wrong side? Well, we got it down to 67 thousandths from uh, 98 thousandths. Let's cut a little more. Put a little more lube on there. We're going to need it, huh? Okay. This has to get a little bit warm. <laughs> Let's see where we're at here. That's a lot of fun. And we got it down to 
43 thousandths. Okay. I think that's probably good enough. I'll load this video and uh, we'll be doing a lot more with this machine here. And uh, I hope you're all having a, a good holiday season. Things are going really good for me. I'm feeling good and I hope you guys are feeling good too. Okay. I'll be back.